everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we're going to talk about Monday Night Raw after Mania last night, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, on Sunday night, WrestleMania 35 took place, as you guys know. And typically, the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania is supposed to be exciting, right? It's supposed to get you hyped. It's supposed to be, you know, the best crowd. It's supposed to be the most interactive night. You know, NXT call-ups, surprises, debuts, returns, just epic stuff flying all over the place, right? Just great stuff. Story, story tell. It's like a new season, right? It's like it's the brand new, it's like opening day, if you will. It's like the first game of a brand new season of any other sport, right? So what we have last night was probably, in my opinion, the worst Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania that I have personally ever seen or that I can remember in recent memory. I honestly can't even remember the last few years, but I, I remember it being a lot more exciting. I remember it being a lot better than what we got last night. It just felt like a total ploy. It felt like we were scammed, if you will. It, it just felt, I don't know, man. It just wasn't special to me. And we're going to cover the whole show here. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on every single thing that happened. And we're going to declare if it was really that good of a show or not. So the show opens. This is probably one of the best parts of the night. You know, the show opens with Seth freaking Rollins. I'm going to say this. The best part of the show was seeing this right here. Outside of Finn Balor with the IC title, this right here was probably, I, I, I'm going to say that this is the best part of the, the show because my boy Seth Rollins comes out with the Universal Championship, and he looks fantastic with it, man. We've been waiting forever to get this. I'll probably buy the effing plaque when it releases of him winning the title at WrestleMania. Yeah, it wasn't that good of a match because, you know, Brock Lesnar and all this stuff. Could have been a lot better match, but holy smokes, is it good to see the Universal title on Monday Night Raw on this man, on the man, on the architect, on, on the on the freaking flames that is Seth Rollins. So the show opens with Seth. He's cutting the promo, and he's talking about the Universal title, and he's talking about this is our title title and they're chanting full-time champ and the freaking crowd's going nuts you deserve it you know they love Seth everybody loves Seth I love Seth freaking amazing so out of nowhere Big E does his little New Day introduction right him New Day Kofi Kingston Xavier Woods all come down to the ring and everybody's like what the hell are you doing here Seth Rollins is confused we're all confused you know he's cutting promos talking about how proud he is of being the WWE champion and I'm not gonna lie guys that's probably one of the best things I've seen too that title on Kofi looks great I'm not gonna lie to you it looks fantastic and um, I, I, I kind of hope he gets a sort of a decent run with it, just to see where he can go, man. Let him let him do some stuff. Let's see if we can get this man um, a decent little title ring going. But he comes out and he's talking about, you know, the winner take all with Becky Lynch, right? He comes out, he's talking to Seth, they're interacting, and I knew where this was going. I could just hear it in his voice, and he says, you know, what if we have a winner take all tonight? WWE title, Universal Championship, both on the line, main event tonight. Seth Rollins thinks about it, you know, he's pondering it for a second, then he goes, challenge accepted, crowd erupts. So the main event is set. Kofi Kingston versus Seth Rollins. Great opener right here, man. I'm thinking, oh shit, I like this. This is a great opener. This is getting me excited. I'm invested in this. I honestly didn't know where they would go with it. You know, I thought for sure, I was like, okay, well, if they go, like my brother caught it. Brad caught it. He was like, you know, there's no way this match is coming to a close. There's no way they're actually going to put both titles on Seth right now. This is a money match. They're totally going to go to pay-per-view with this. If this is what they end up doing, there's no way a champion's crown tonight. And I was like, no, bro, you know what? This is the Raw after Mania. You don't know what's going to happen. Just shut your mouth. You don't know what you're saying. Well, boy, was was Brad right. So the main event is set. We got Seth versus Kofi in the main event. And we go to a Major Brothers versus Revival Raw Tag Team title rematch. Now, three things I have to say here. First of all, I thought that we were done with automatic rematches. Second of all, this match was better than their match at WrestleMania. Still not the greatest, but definitely better than their Mania match. And third of all, the Revival uh, continued to lose. I thought they were going to to play hot potato right here. I was like, oh god, they're just gonna play hot potato. Major brothers are going to win the, uh, gonna lose the titles back to the revival just so they can say they ended the streak at Mania, have a little Mania moment. That's not what they did. They actually gave them the titles and they let them retain by a fluke roll up again. So we're doing sort of a, a B team type 2018 run here with the Major brothers. After that, we have Trash Corbin. Trash Corbin comes down to the ring. You know, he's cutting a promo on Kurt Angle, which. Jesus Christ, man. I loved this. I love this. I'm not going to lie to you. The, the crowd told Trash Corbin. They, they, they yelled, shut the F up, Chance, rang out through the building. And I was loving this, man. I was like, Jesus Christ, they are giving it to this man. Out comes Kurt Angle. Out comes Kurt Angle, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, will you please retire already? I thought your send-off was last night. Thank God he wasn't in wrestling attire. I was so happy when this man didn't wrestle. But he comes out and he says, you know, he wishes Trash Corbin luck. 
and then he says the worst of luck or something and he punches him in the face and lays out he lays out trash corbin out of nowhere somebody's music hits and everybody in the arena is like who in the hell is this i was like who the hell is this you know i'm sort of shocked i'm like okay we got some new talent it's freaking lars sullivan bro lars sullivan another Braun. he's like the evil braun Strowman, which means he's gonna just be pushed and he's going to be just a big man, and it's going to be boring. It, it just see, He's a boring character. I never liked him in NXT. I never liked him in his matches in NXT. I just, I'm not a big fan of big guys. Like, big guys just don't interest me. Big Cass and Braun Strowman and, you know, the, the guys like that, I just I can't get into it, man. They're, they're very one-dimensional. Even though Braun Strowman's a freak and I like him, per se, I still just I can't get behind them. It's very hard to book somebody like that. And for those reasons, I'm out. But anyway, Lars Sullivan beats the hell out of Kurt Angle. And I was just like, yawn, I don't care about this. I would have much rather seen a dream or anything like that. Even though I know that people like that get ruined on the main roster. I, I'd like to think WWE is going to be, you know, changed or help people or, or, or give guys a chance. But, you know, it's, it is what it is. Lars Sullivan on the main roster, it just puts me to sleep. So next out, we get Alexa Bliss in an open challenge. Out comes Bailey, And apparently she tweeted something on Twitter talking to Bailey. Bailey and Sasha Banks and trying to get in their head or something and saying, I'll fight either one of you. Just show up to the ring. Bailey answers the open challenge, and I think Alexa Bliss beat Bailey in like seven to nine minutes. And I will say that Alexa Bliss had a new, like, found aggression about herself, but it's still just, why are we burying Bailey? Why are we beating Bailey? Like, what, what's the point here? What is the. What is the, I don't know, man, it just didn't make sense to me. I, I just, like, Alexa Bliss is the host last night, and then out of nowhere just comes out tonight and beats Bailey. I don't know, just didn't make very much sense to me, and we're just continuing to crap on Bailey. Next, we get a promo from Becky. She comes out, she cuts promo on Charlotte, Rhonda, all that, and she. I, one thing that I thought was funny is she said Rhonda and Rick's daughter. I thought that was a good little moment there. That just, that's just why Becky's a beast. Out comes Lacey Evans, crappy, terrible Lacey Evans, right? She comes out, and she... She gets in Becky's face and lays out, she lays out the man. The man that just won the Undisputed Championships, the SmackDown Live and Raw Women's Championships, lays her out, and they get into a brawl onto the stage, and I'm just thinking, like, why? Like, this woman hasn't had a single match on TV, and now she's fighting the the undisputed champion Becky Lynch the night after Mania. Good God almighty. Talk about a rocket strap to her. I don't agree with that at all. I don't see how that helps anyone in this situation. So we have that. Next up, we have a tag team match between Ricochet and Black and Glorious Gable. And the crowd did the wave during this match because who cares, guys? Who cares? Ricochet and Black. I will say this. I think that Ricochet and Aleister Black, I think they're going to finally, I think we're finally going to get their singles runs. Going into the Superstar Shakeup next week, that's something I forgot to mention. The Superstar Shakeup will be next week. Kofi Kingston announced it at the beginning of the show, so that's something we can look forward to. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. We'll probably do a little prediction Superstar Shakeup here on the channel, but I think that after uh, next week, I think that Ricochet and Black will be split up on different brands. I think Black will stay on Raw and Ricochet will go to SmackDown and that way we will finally have them split up as a team and that will make a lot of sense there. But the crowd did the wave during the match, man, because who cares? There's nothing at stake. This is just like any other Monday Night Raw. Here comes the same tag team matches that we have seen. Here comes the same old Raw. Nothing new, nothing crazy, just same old tag team match. I think Ricochet and Black won here in about 10, 11 minutes. Next up we have a Elias promo and he says if anybody interrupts him that he is done and they will, they will have hell to pay is what he says. Elias says, if anybody interrupts my show tonight, they will have hell to pay. Sort of a little teaser there for what would come later. Next up, we get whatever the hell this is. What in the hell is this? Everybody's saying it's like a Bray Wyatt promo. Everybody's saying that it's going to be this, it's going to be that. I even had people thinking that it might have been a Marty Skrull promo, given that there was an umbrella on the box. I'm not going to lie to you. When it first popped up, I, I made a joke to Brad. I said, oh, look, it's Marty Skrull. He's coming to WWE just because there was an umbrella in the middle of the box. I'm not sure if this is Bray Wyatt. I don't know. I don't know if I fully saw the, you know, the full promo. Maybe I missed something that guaranteed that it was Bray Wyatt, but it probably is Bray Wyatt. Like, it makes the most sense. I could see that. Maybe it's the Superstar Shake-Up or something. Bray Wyatt's been on TV for a while, but... This was super weird, and it actually this actually has me intrigued a little just because I'm wondering what the hell that is. Like, what in the hell is that? Next up, we have Dean Ambrose and Bobby Trashley, which is a match that no one wants to see. Um, Dean Ambrose, they're advertising it as his last match ever. He comes out, and this is very odd. Like,
like Bobby Trashley comes out to like his music playing, but then it stops playing. He stops on the ramp. He's looking around. Him and Leo are being quiet and looking around. Just super weird and awkward and stuff. And then Bobby Trashley just gets on the mic and says, don't worry, Ambrose. I'll take care of your wife when you leave. Out of nowhere. Just says that out of nowhere. Made no sense whatsoever. Um, Dean Ambrose attacks Bobby Trashley. We were supposed to get a match. We don't get a match. Bobby Trashley puts Dean Ambrose through the announce table, and then uh, that is it. He's laid to waste, and that is the last of Dean Ambrose on Monday Night Raw. Next up, they ruin the return of Sami Zayn. They just show Samuel Zayn walking down the hallway. That's it. You could have just had this man's music hit out of nowhere and have him have an open challenge, but no, you, you just show him walking down the hallway next Sami Zayn returns that is so lackluster and anticlimactic why not have a huge pop his pop wasn't nearly as big as it would have been had it just happened out of nowhere I thought that was absolute crap so Sami Zayn comes out holds an open challenge Finn Balor answers the open challenge Intercontinental Championship match solid matchup Finn does retain after the matchup Sami uh continuing to be a heel here I even called it before the matchup I said look Brad he's wearing white tape on his hands he's a heel still and sure enough he's still a heel he cuts a promo on the on the crowd telling them they're all lazy garbage and they're the they're what's wrong with wwe before this i forgot to mention Molo, mojo raleigh was in a mirror with like this cracked lightning style paint on his eyeball i don't know if he's is he a demon now I, i'm not sure just continuing trash with mojo raleigh maybe he's the cooked chicken in a box i don't know next up we have a interview with dana brooke and i don't know what's up with this but apparently we're gonna get a dana brooke push or something she talks about becky lynch and how she's gonna be uh challenging for the title and she cut a very cringy awkward promo like it was not it didn't come off fluent it didn't come off as natural it came off very weird and forced and i didn't like it at all it, it just wasn't good i don't know what they're thinking next up we have the elias segment and he does the i, I like this part of the show a lot uh elias talked about he, he was doing a rap you know because john cena interrupted him at wrestlemania 35 he does a rap style promo and at the end he said the next man that walks out is going to be a dead man and then the Undertaker's bell freaking hits. And Undertaker is here. Same old shtick. Big boot. Choke slam. Tombstone. Crowd does like a mock one, two, three count. And Undertaker is gone. So I thought that was a cool part of the show. I know that uh, it meant nothing. It literally meant nothing. It, it was just a ploy just to, you know, get a pop and have the Undertaker here. Cool to see The Undertaker. I'm glad that, you know, he didn't really wrestle at WrestleMania. I think this was a good little, nice little nod here. And I like that they did. They set it up the way they did. Pretty creative. Pretty funny the way they did that. I, I enjoyed that part. Next up, we have our main event. Winner take all for the WWE and Universal Championship. Seth Rollins taking on Kofi Kingston here for both titles. And everybody knew it, man. I I, I was at, I had everybody say, well, what about Undisputed Era is going to show up and crash this thing and beat the hell out of everybody and have like a Nexus angle. And everybody was just calling out all these crazy theories about who's going to interfere in this matchup. And they go for like five, eight, ten minutes. I can't remember. And then out of nowhere, the bar. Yes, Sheamus and Cesaro, a SmackDown tag team, comes out of nowhere, attacking them, leading to disqualification. The crowd's crapping on it. They're like, oh my God, here we go. And I looked at Brad and I said, look at that, next week tag team match or, or tag team match. And bam, sure enough, impromptu tag team match, Kofi Kingston and Seth Rollins taking on the bar. And my God, did the crowd actually just not give a crap about this match. And I didn't either. There was nothing at stake. Nothing mattered. They had beach balls going out. They were doing the wave. They, did, they were chanting all this different stuff. And my God, the WWE crowds can be a nuisance. But just zero creativity on this Monday Night Raw. I, I just, I don't know. I mean, maybe it would have been better had Lars Sullivan not been the NXT call-up. Maybe if, I, I just don't know. Man. Nothing about this show stood out from other Monday Night Raw. Rawls outside of The Undertaker showing up. Like, Lars Sullivan just fits into the boring, sluggish, lazy, repetitive, garbage Monday Night Raw narrative, and it was just, it just wasn't a good show. It wasn't a good show. After, after Monday Night Raw went off the air, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns came out, and they did the fist, the, the shield fist bump on the stage, and I think, I don't know if this is a work still. I, I have a lot of, is this a work, or is this legitimately Dean Ambrose leaving? Is he going to AEW? Is he doing all this? Kind of seems like he's going to AEW, uh, AEW, because they put him through the announce table, and it's a big, you know, middle finger, like, F you, bro, you want, you want to leave us? Then we'll, we'll show you how we think of you and AEW, puts him through the announce table. I can see that. Vince McMahon is 
that kind of person, but my god, guys, I just, I was not a fan of this show. I wasn't a fan of this show, and maybe my expectations were too high. Maybe I was just going into it, but I'm genuinely, like, once I know the WrestleMania card, I'm, I'm usually more genuinely excited for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live than I am the WrestleMania show itself, because I know the WrestleMania is not the show that it always hypes up to be, even though WrestleMania was a lot better than it has been in past years. Like, I actually enjoyed um, most of the matches. We covered WrestleMania 35. If you want my full WrestleMania 35 predictions or review, please go check it out. We uploaded it yesterday early in the morning, and I, I told you guys my full thoughts on everything, and I, I just felt that the show was anticlimactic. There was a lot of moments that just didn't feel like uh, it, they should have ended in the moment that they did. And I don't know, man. Maybe SmackDown, SmackDown Live is always better than Monday Night Raw, so hopefully tonight on SmackDown Live, it'll be a lot better show than what Monday Night Raw gave us. I just, I am just, I don't know, man. I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling the show, and this freaking video went way longer than I expected, but uh, I had a lot of people always tell me that they wish that I would review Raw and SmackDown week to week. Well, here's your Monday Night Raw After Mania review, and I just pretty much gave you all of my thoughts on everything that happened. Just not a good show. Hopefully, Superstar Shakeup will mix things up. We'll do. I'll do my uh, fantasy booking or predictions for that, and I'll give my full thoughts on that. But uh, Universal Champion Seth Rollins and Finn Balor Intercontinental Champion and Sami Zayn returning and the Undertaker thing was probably the best thing I saw on this show. And two of those things were had nothing to do with the show's booking. It was more of a visual. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys, but I did not enjoy Monday Night Raw. I would love to know your thoughts down below. I wasn't a fan. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.